My name is Holly Carroll. I'm a biologist with a passion for the great apes. But they're all endangered, and we're losing them much too fast. This forest lost forever. And I wanted people to see for themselves what's happening. How amazing is this? With a film crew, I traveled to some of the world's most remote forests to be the first to film all the apes in 3D in the wild. Looks like the plane's stuck. It was a daunting and sometimes perilous adventure, but always rewarding. Come with me now for a behind the scenes trip of a lifetime as I go walking with the great apes. Deep in the Congo lives an endangered ape most people have never even heard of, the bonobo. We traveled to a remote forest to meet Sally Cox, a woman working to protect them in the wild. And the adventure began as the plane touched down. How was that? Um, looks like the plane's stuck. But it was a really soft landing. Uh, we think once we get all the gear out of it, maybe we'd be able to push it out of the hole it's stuck in. This was the only charter company willing to take the crew and all our camera equipment out here, so we worried that if they didn't get off the runway easily, they might not come back for us. Sally arrived in a near panic, having been told that our plane crashed. I was scared. I thought As they tried in vain to get the plane unstuck, we decided to start making our way since we had a full day's drive to get to the forest of Kokolapori, where the bonobos live. Before we'd driven a few miles, we had even more obstacles to contend with. This is why we practice all that log walking the way in. What's happening? Uh, it's safer, I guess, to get out of the car and then drive over it. Um, it's sort of a dodgy bridge. And you said that one has landed here before, but today it just got unlucky with getting stuck, huh? Apparently, yeah. Uh, I think this pilot has never come to this here. Oh, no. strip before. That, he's got to navigate that. I think we ought to put them on this bridge. What's that one? Sounds like you're great. This is the last of the dodgy bridge, but it's to be the longest and the worst. Relieved to hear that the plane eventually got out. Did 
Foto, foto. Foto. Abuela. Abuela. Meo. Voy a usted meo. Oh, yo no. Oh, ya. Oh, ya. Oh, ya. Oh, ya. We stopped in a town called Jolu, still four hours from our final destination. But the cars hired to take us the rest of the way had been commandeered by government officials, so we had some time to kill. These kids are way better than me. It turns out travel in Africa involves a lot of waiting. When the cars were returned, we weren't entirely sure they'd make it the whole way to Kokolapori. The director took one for the team and rode him back. Flat tire. <laughs> Not surprised. Yes, we can. <laughs> <laughs> were going so fast, I was terrified we'd hit something or someone. I think they were eager to make it to Kokolapori before nightfall. We didn't in the end, but we made it alive. After all the previous day's travel, the crew were exhausted, but excited to finally be heading into the forest to film the bonobos. We had enough porters to help with the camera gear and trackers who know how to find the apes, but getting decent footage was another matter. It was proving hard to find bonobos. We walked for hours in the sweltering heat without any sign of them. And then when we did spot them, they moved off quickly or were obscured by trees. Filming these apes was going to be much harder than we'd thought. Even way up in the trees, they seemed almost human, but very elusive. I was grateful for every glimpse, but hoped the crew would get better shots. Finally, we came upon a family group relaxing and grooming and managed to get a few shots of these rare apes. At the end of the day, Sally explains some of her achievements here. You've been working here for more than a decade, and it's a really a community-based project. So everything we've done here has been done in cooperation with the local people, and we've developed our vision together. It's called the Bonobo Conservation Initiative, which helps the bonobos by empowering the local. A particular success is the cultivation of a more robust strain of cassava that the people can eat and sell. They've also started microcredit, educational programs, and provide employment. <laughs> the next day, I got to see just how grateful the people are for these programs 
when a group of women who'd walked for miles were singing outside our huts. Involving locals in conservation, the bonobos will have a greater chance at survival, at least in this area. Sadly, that's not the case in other areas of the Congo, where the bonobos are still poached heavily. Our next location was a sanctuary dealing with that very problem. We've been on a, this pogo stick for about two and a half hours. We just have about two and a half left. Or it's actually a truck. But the amount of body contact I've had with Ben and Mike just feels like I'm sort of a ping pong ball and they're just two ping pong players. Glad to be done with the bad roads, we were back in the air with our good friends, Canavia Charters. We were hoping our next landing would be better than the last one. just outside the bustling capital of Kinshasa. This place is called Lola Ya Bonobo, which means paradise for bonobos. Claudine Andre, the founder, explained that this 30 hectare sanctuary is the only refuge for bonobos confiscated from poachers and the illegal pet trade. She started this place 20 years ago. A determined and brave woman, she's been rescuing and caring for these orphans even through the dangers and devastation of civil war. Claudine believes that the key to successful conservation is the education of today's youth. And if you love, you protect. So it's a, it's a good way. Children are taught that they live in the only country with bonobos, and with this stewardship comes responsibility. This education is working, too. Claudine told us that when new arrivals of bonobos come in, it is often because local children have tipped the police that someone's keeping them illegally. Because here at Lola, they've learned that bonobos are rare and belong in the forest. However, the film crew were finding these captive bonobos much easier to film than those wild ones. Bonobos, like chimpanzees, are the closest living relatives we have. They look very much like chimps, except for their parted hair, dark skin, and red lips.
But their behavior is quite different from chimpanzees. They live in female-dominated groups and tend to resolve conflicts much more peacefully, often using sex to diffuse tension and restore harmony to the group. I had to laugh. Sometimes watching the bonobos was like watching any human family interact. In the wild, a baby bonobo will be dependent on its mother for at least five years. But most of the animals here at Lola are orphans, except a few who've been here long enough to have their own babies. The older animals get to spend their days in the trees of the forest enclosures, but the youngest orphans need to be cared for by surrogate mamas. The new arrivals are often weak and always traumatized. They need to be cared for around the clock until they're strong enough to join the others. Nearly half of them don't survive. Inside the sleeping house, I got to see firsthand how much work it is to care for these guys. The mamas bathe them, feed them, and make sure they get plenty of affection and playtime. But it's not an easy task. Each bonobo has their own personality, and some are cheekier than others.
Um, but this is probably the coolest moment of my life so far. That um, Bombo is not just a baby bonobo, but he's one of the sweetest ones that I've met so far. And he keeps um, trying to hug me, <laughs> which feels really special. It may seem like they're so sweet that you would want one as a pet, um, but that is the problem. That is why they're here. People are killing their families. And, um, but they don't have mothers and fathers anymore, and they don't have a forest to go back to. And that's why they end up here. So even though I love being able to hold them, they're not pets, and they should never be pets. And as soon as they're old enough and strong enough to hurt people, uh, that, that, that's when people get rid of them. Or worse, they die in captivity before they can be rescued. These apes are so closely related to us. They use tools, love their young, and live in a peaceful society. And they aren't killing off any of their cousins. We have much to learn from them. this bonobo I mean there's so much like us and we have such a rare opportunity to study them and try to understand their behavior and maybe gain a better understanding of ourselves <laughs> <laughs> 